Hey guys and welcome to another quick tutorial. In this video I'll teach you how to create game ready rocks really quickly. Um, we're going to use 3ds Max and a script called Rock Generator. Now this is a script that will allow you to create different variations of rock really quickly. So I'm gonna use this to create our rock. Now this is a really good script for people who maybe don't have access to sculpting programs like ZBrush who aren't maybe good at sculpting or don't own a tablet uh, this is a really good alternative in my opinion uh, I personally use it when I want to fill my uh, environments with some life but in the end it's up to you for what you're going to use it um, so yeah just download the script by clicking on this link and once you've downloaded it open 3ds max and just drag and drop the file and that's basically it now let me explain what we see here uh, this is basically the button to create the high poly rock we can also create a low poly rock from you know from the script which I'm going to do by the way and here we can like uh, create different types of rock which is really cool so let me just go ahead and create one so as you can see it created our rock and if I delete it and create another one as you can see it will always create a different shape which is really cool and that means you can create different types uh, you know different variations of rock for your scene to not make it look generic <clears throat> excuse me so I'm just gonna pick an interesting shape I like so I'm just gonna create new ones till I like one so this part is pretty much personal preference so but for the sake of tutorial I'll just pick one really quickly now so let me let me uh, Oh, let me uh, show off these buttons. So this is the basic rock. You can create a boulder over here. Uh, you can even create an eroded rock and a sand rose. So pretty cool, in my opinion. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I'll just go with this one really. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank up the viewport detail and as you can see it created some more details on our surface so you can crank this value up even more I think so pretty cool actually okay so the next thing I want to do is I want to basically um, let me put this down. Now let's let's get six. So set the viewport detail to six, and the next thing is uh, creating the low poly. So if you hit create, it will automatically create the low poly, and it will also be UV mapped, which is really really cool. So I'm just gonna collapse it, even collapse the high poly one I'm gonna check out the rock shape and as you can see it's really cool uh, you can close it now and if I go to unhide unselected or unhide all we can also take a look at the uh, low poly pretty cool so I'm just gonna unhide all and I'm gonna take both of them and scale it up so we're going to use X normal for baking it so it's free you can download it from the internet X normal it's basically a map baker so really cool and it's much faster than max in terms of baking so I use X normal. You can also use Max, but I prefer X normal. 
<clears throat> so what we need to do is we need, quickly need to create a projection um, to create a cage. So pick list and get the rock. And now you want to make sure that this cage basically coats all of the high poly and low poly. So something like this will do. And once you're done it, hit it, hit export. Name it rock underscores. K, uh, let me rename it cage. And that's basically it. So now we have to export it. So get to the folder you want and name it rock cage. Uh, make sure it's on triangles, okay? Now you can delete it. Take the high, uh, take the low poly first, maybe. Delete projection. We don't need it anymore. Export, export selected. Low poly. Well, maybe rock. LP. Triangles. Make sure the topology of the cage and low poly is the exact same. Otherwise, it won't work. Now let's basically export the high poly. So export, export selected, rock, high poly. Uh, let's let's use quads. Doesn't matter. So it will take a while because you know this mesh is much more dense than the other two meshes. So wait for it for it to do its thing. Uh, I would bake it inside. Wait, let me first. Now we can close Max now. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna clear all meshes. So add mesh. Go to Quick over here. Um, let's create a new folder first and name textures. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, select rock high poly, then go to low poly, select the low poly, right click, browse external cage file. And once you've done that, click on rock cage. And it will just tell you the same thing I did before. So, baking options. Um, let's create the high, uh, normal map and the ambient occlusion. Let's uh, render out 2k maps. So, just name it rock. So now you basically just hit generate maps. So it will <coughs> render out the normal map really quickly as you can see. And as you can see it uh, is also showing us the high poly details. Now we just have to wait for the ambient occlusion. <laughs> I might speed this part up. Okay, uh, the baking is done. Uh, we can basically close X normal. So let's open um, the folder. Okay, so we have our normal map over here and our ambient occlusion. Uh, now let me quickly explain what these are for. Basically the ambient occlusion stores the shadow information and the normal map stores the information from the high poly. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And we're gonna get another map called curvature map and it basically stores the curvature information so these are the three maps we're going to use but before that let us quickly check out the rock inside marmoset tool bag so rock low poly let's grab the normal map and yeah, let's just put the ambient occlusion inside
So as you can see, it rendered out pretty nicely. Um, of course, we got areas that are a bit um, that are a bit. I've no, I'm not sure what this is. Probably comes from the high poly, but we can fix this in our painting package as well as this. But these are just minor, minor issues. So yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Uh, I'm going to crank it up that much. Um, so now we're going to have to texture it. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep it, uh, let it op be open. I would use Substance Painter 2 for texturing this prop, but the problem is I don't own Substance and I was using a trial for 30 days, which run out just two days earlier. So unfortunately, I cannot use Substance at this point. Uh, I still got some days on Designer, but since I don't have Substance, I'm going to use Quixel. But it's an equally powerful software. So before that, I'm going to have to open Photoshop. And I'm going to get my normal map inside here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open the Quixel, which is basically a texturing package. I'm going to press this NDO button, and I want to convert this normal map into a cavity map. So just hit that button, and as you can see, it created a cavity from my normal map. So let me zoom in, as you can see. It stores the curvature information from my high poly, which is really cool. So I'm just gonna save it as a TIFF as well. Uh, let me get the test. So rock curvature. Okay. Uh, let me check it out. Yep, so that's pretty much it. Um, now I want to texture it inside Quixel. So I will open DDO2, load in the mesh. So desktop, um, quick, low poly. We don't need a material ID. Textures, normal map, aim and occlusion, curvature. And let's put the resolution to 2K because our maps are 2K. So hit create and we'll start to create the project for us. Okay, let's zoom out on this guy. Um, so yeah, that's basically the Quixel Wii port. I'm gonna do something for myself. I'm gonna, first, I'm gonna adjust the viewport the way I like it. So uh, let's let's just use this. I like this one. <clears throat> so the huge benefit of Quixel is it ships with tons of materials so I'm not sure but let's look for rock oh yeah so we have a really nice rock material coming with Quixel so what we can do now is we can even browse to through the different channels and I'm gonna put the intensity of the texture normal a bit down so it won't interfere with the normal I already have in place. You can all the maps by pressing one, two, three. Yeah, this is my ambient uh, roughness. This is my uh, normal, and this is my ambient occlusion. So yeah, that's basically it. And so yeah, really good texture. So I'm just gonna 
look for some reference. Uh, I like this one, but I also like this look, so I'm not sure the way I want it. You can all obviously decide yourself, but let me just try to get a more bluish tone maybe. Yeah, sound like this maybe. Or you can also go like a desert type of stone, I'm not sure. The point is you can you can create different types of rock obviously, but I'm just gonna stick to the bluish one I think, I guess. So maybe a bit more desaturated. It's too bluish at this point. Yep. Okay, so um what I'm gonna do uh do is I'm gonna create some more variations in the so uh, in the what's called in the material. So I will duplicate the rock material. I'm gonna brighten it up quite a bit. So you might be thinking, okay, that is too bright. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the Dynamask editor, which is really powerful in my opinion. And we have some things we can do. So remember how we baked out the curvature? Now we're going to use it. So first I'm going to go to black. If you hit M, you can preview the mask. If we hit curvature now, as you can see, it brings out all the curvature information we baked out earlier. So if I like try to make it bigger, Let's let's try to crank up the curvature. Um, so it's basically taking the information of the curvature from the map we baked earlier. Okay, so something like this is really good. Um, Let's just play around with the brightness and contrast. Okay, this looks good to me. So, this is going to be my edge pass. So, we can rename it. So, we can just name it Edge Pass. Okay. So, let's check it out on different lighting conditions it looks a bit glossy okay so increase the light quite a bit so if, if you think it's not bright enough you can also just go ahead and change it um, yeah that looks good it's gonna keep it like that Alright, so I'm gonna make this one rougher then because obviously this gets more damage so it's it's going to be rougher. So let me get to my channels and make it a bit rough. Maybe this even bit a bit less. So I really like this this variation here. 
Um, and yeah, now it's all about adding maybe some miscoloration, some dirt. So let me just give it another pass off. Uh, let's look for dirt. Now let's give it another pass of sand, maybe. So I will put the texture intensity down. Dynamask. So now you can choose. Basically, go to black first. Uh, you could also make like a gradient. So the story behind yes yeah, story behind it it would be that you know it sits on 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 a dirty dirty like um, surface so it it picks up sand so let me show you again so as you can see the mask at this point is really generic um, so what you're gonna do is uh, you can use textures to break it up so go to dirt and basically get a texture that is vibrant like this one as you can see it kinda breaks it up really good so you could do something like this and maybe even um, you know change the gradient so it's it's not that it's not that you know um, not that extreme so I'm just gonna keep it to something like this Accept. Um, I'm not sure what's happening. Okay, it didn't crash. Thank God. That would be really awful. So as you can see, we have our albedo now. Okay, so maybe we can add some moss patches, really. So let me take a look at this. Do we see moss anywhere? Actually, I want to edit the. Wait, do I want to edit the dynamic? So, as you can see, texturing is basically uh, just thinking of what looks cool, what might not look cool. But I'm gonna also perhaps go in the mask here and use the texture as well just to break up some of the curvature here not that much that much be that's enough okay so we have I think grass we can use not frass but grass so you could also use grass for other stuff and basically get down the scale um, and the texture intensity also in the normal.
bring the intensity up a bit. Okay. So yes, so it has crashed. We can just open it again. Nice. Okay, so, so far so good, but as you can see it's covering all of our surface, so what can we do? Um, I'm going to try to utilize the ambient occlusion for that, so I want to see how it looks in ambient occlusion, uh, occluded areas. So basically it's set to multiply, so you're going to change the screen. And hit invert oh not this one but this one and now you have to extreme make the effect a bit more extreme by increasing the tightness bit of contrast also Yep, and I kind of like it. It gives the surface a bit color. I was wondering maybe even the object space direction. Now I'm going to utilize that for something else. So basically I'm just going to stick with that. So accept mask. And press 1 to see your channel. I'm going to desaturate it though. Okay, so, you know, whenever you, you can also decide for yourself, maybe you don't like the grass over there, or the moss, you can just de disable it, which is really cool, and solid backdrop back a bit. So, at this point I want to check out the rock in different lighting, see if it still looks good. really good. This is the Unreal preset. Okay, so let's go back to our default. So I want to take the rock, duplicate it again, put it over here. Actually, not over here. Let's keep it. Uh, let's put the edge definition one back on top. Um, but basically, I'm going to try to give it a bit more color. Um, by using the object space direction let's 
just gonna minimize the effect though. So press one. See it. And as you can see, that doesn't really make sense. So I'm going to put the sand layer above the moss layer. Okay, so I think that's it for the for the rock tutorial. I'm gonna put it inside Marmoset real quick, but you know you could now use this workflow and basically create um, different variations with the same material. So what Quixel allows you to is, you know, it allows you to save this material as a smart material, which I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna name it rock custom. So notice how Quixel will now allow me to uh, save that material as a uh, smart material as you can see. <laughs> there we go. So it's just previewing it. Let's go back to our project though so when I open 3D I can now go to custom smart materials and where is the yeah I might have to restart the suit but basically you can now use this material for different rocks if you try to make different variations so open the exporter by clicking this button name it rock set path um, go to quick okay export all materials Okay, so I, th I guess now we can open it in Marmoset. So I'm just going to open the Unreal 4 preset. And now it's basically all about plugging the maps in. So normal, uh, it's inverted, so hit that. Gloss, uh, roughness, albedo. Metallic Okay, now that's uh, how the textures look. Maybe let's, you know, just first of all, let's go with color. Now let's Let's try to find a really cool uh, looking background, ah, uh, HDRI. Sky, make it brighter. Play around with the lighting yourself to show off some of that detail.
That looks pretty, pretty cool. <clears throat> Is something bluish, duplicate the light. I'm just going to stick with uh, single lighting. Okay, so basically that's all about the tutorial, uh, I suppose. So, I can also show off the wireframes. Um, as you can see, it's pretty low poly. So, let's check out the main camera. So, you have a, some options like depth of field which is really really cool um, main camera you can also play around with these values exposure contrast saturation sharpen Um, bloom vignette vignette grain yeah so yeah so that's pretty much uh, the rock so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and yeah, I really like enjoying, uh, I really like creating content for you guys because, you know, I like just sharing my knowledge I gained over the years. So, yeah, that's pretty much what this tutorial is all about. So you can now create some cool renders with it. Um, it's duplicated even. So. Okay, so uh, there's one more thing. Uh, basically, I wanted to uh, say before I end this video, I've set up a donation link. Uh, so it's it's for the people that really like what I'm doing, really want to support me, creating more content for you guys. Because at this moment, at this point. It's really hard for me to get the time to create tutorials um, because I do not make any money out of making these tutorials. It's all voluntary work. So if you, if you want to support the production of these videos in any way, or maybe you just want to show your appreciation, this is a great way to do it. So it's, it's you don't have to, but I would really appreciate if if you, I would really appreciate any donation that would come through and it will also uh, motivate me to make much more videos considering game asset creation so thank you for watching and have fun modeling this